Hey, welcome everyone. I am Steve Jackson with Evolve Guitar. I hope you're doing well out there. Today, I wanted to give you an introduction to what we call the caged system. So if you're not familiar with that, I want you to get familiar with this because if you're somebody that is learning to solo and you know some scales and you're beginning to apply those, you're gonna find quickly that when you learn a scale, you're probably learning it in one spot on the guitar or maybe in a couple spots, but it's gonna be difficult at first to connect all those spots and be able to play a scale all over the whole guitar. This is gonna help you so much with that, with your improvising and everything else that you're doing on the guitar. It's really gonna unlock the entire fretboard for you. So in a nutshell, what we need to learn for this is five chord shapes. I'm guessing if you're watching this, you probably already know these chord shapes and all we have to do is just spell out the word caged. So C, A, G, E, and D. With those five chord shapes, we can basically play any chord that we want in any spot on the whole guitar. So if you kind of imagine the possibilities here, if you're playing in C, for example, so instead of being stuck maybe in this spot right here that maybe you're used to, you could play in any spot on the whole guitar once you understand these patterns. The way that I like to get into explaining this is that we're gonna take a chord that you're familiar with, so the C chord, and we're gonna play a C chord in five different shapes. So as I said a minute ago, there's five shapes we're gonna learn. There's the C chord shape, the A chord shape, the G shape, the E, and the D. So what we're literally doing here is we're playing a C chord, but each chord we're gonna play is gonna use a different chord shape. So let me show you how this works. Here's the first chord shape. I'm sure you're familiar with this. This is the C chord, and it looks like a traditional C chord that we're used to playing. And I wanted to point out that right here, this note, the fifth string, third fret, is the note C, that is our root note, and that's giving us a C chord. Now, go back to that word caged, right? So after C, the next letter is A. So the next chord shape we're gonna use here is this A chord shape. I'm using kind of different fingers than normal, but I'll show you why. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this A shape and we're gonna move it up. And we're gonna move it up right here to the fifth fret on the same strings. And then we're gonna take our pointer finger and grab that same note that we played a second ago, that root note, the C. And when we play this A chord shape and we put it right here with our root note on C, we have a C chord again. So again, starting from over, we have the C chord that is using the C chord shape. Now we have a C chord that is using the A chord shape. So that is the second chord in our pattern of caged. Now moving on from here, right, from C to A, G is the next chord shape that we're gonna use. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this G chord shape. Again, here's our root note on the sixth string third fret, that's a G. So we need to find a C. So we're gonna take this G chord shape, we're gonna move it right here. So this note here on the eighth fret of the E string, that is C. And I'm gonna play what would be a G chord shape. It gets a little crazy, right? Because I have to bar it with my pointer finger. But you can see here's the G chord shape. So this chord shape that looks like a G is still a C chord. So now we have a C chord in three different spots, right? We have the traditional C chord. We have the A-shaped C chord right here that connects up, that's the next one. The, after that, right, we're moving up here to this C. This gives us the G-shape C chord. The next one you might be familiar with too, the E-shape, right, C-A-G-E. So this is gonna look like our traditional bar chord shape. So we're gonna take this E chord shape, we're gonna move it up right here to the eighth fret. That gets us the same root note that we were playing here. See how this connects, here's that G shape. And then when we do the E shape, it's actually using the same root note, but it's up here now. So this is C also using the E shape version. So the next chord here is gonna be the D shape. I'm gonna again use different fingers than I would normally use to play a D chord because we need to be able to move it up and get the open string in there as well. 
So if we take this D chord shape that we're used to and we're gonna connect it up here. So now we're on the 12th fret of the high E and 13 of the B and 12 of the G and then 10 of the D here. So here's our D shape chord. Now again, this is actually a C chord. So we have our C chord shape, A, G, E, and then our D up here. After that, we'd really just be repeating the same chord shapes. So we started off on C. If we were to move this chord shape all the way here, an octave higher, again, we'd have to use different fingers to do this and it'd be kind of a funky shape. But that would be the next C chord shape and we could just keep this pattern going as we're playing the C chord shape here. We would move up next in the pattern to the A shape and we would just repeat everything that we just did up 12 frets higher. Now, the coolest part about all of this is that once you know that pattern, you could apply it to any chord. So, of course, we just did it with only C chords, but if I wanted to apply it to a different chord, I would just follow the exact same pattern. Now, for example, if I wanted to find A chords all over the neck, I won't go through the whole thing, but you could see how I could. If I started here on an A chord, again, of course, that's my A chord shape. So in the pattern of caged, I'm, I started with C, and then I moved to A, so that's where we're at here. So this is the A shape. So in this pattern, the next shape that what I would use would be the G shape. So I would find this G shape, and I would move it up to where my root note was on A, and I would bar it across, and here would be my A chord using a G shape. And I would just keep moving up. So after that, I would go to E, and then to D, and then I would start over and just keep going C, A, G, E, D. As long as you can start seeing how these five chord shapes repeat each other and they all connect, you can start seeing how you could play any chord you want in any spot on the whole guitar. So to give you a really quick idea of how you might start applying this in your soloing and improvising, is again, taking this chord shape, this C shape, and then remembering the next shape above it that we were using, which was the A shape, right? So if we move this up here and we start remembering that this is also a C chord. We could go from this shape and then we could move up into this other position and start soloing in there and matching those same notes. 